Um, just want to give you guys a, a FYI. Okay, sounds good. We'll go ahead and start at six o'clock, Ricky. I think that's fine. Okay. All right. Well, I know uh, we'll, we'll get going here in just a second. I know last time we had a bunch of people join at the very last minute. I see uh, one other person joining us now. But uh, out of respect for everyone's time, we'll go ahead and, and get started here. So first of all, let me say welcome to everyone. I'm glad you could make it tonight. Uh, here we're, We are here tonight uh, to discuss a study issue. So this is City Council sponsored study issue DPW 19-07. That being ascertain suitable locations for the installation of youth cricket batting cages and potential funding sources. Um, some of you may know the history on this, but if you don't, the background where this came from or what precipitated this study issue was during the conceptual design process for the Fair Oaks Park renovation project a couple of years ago. As we got resident input, uh, we got a lot of input from residents about the need uh, for cricket facilities. Uh, we heard about the need for facilities. Uh, you know, we do have the one pitch at Ortega, but that's all. Uh, so we heard about the need for facilities, you know, talking about pitches, talking about practice batting cages. Um, and we also heard about a lot of the benefits of cricket. Um, so after that, of that robust discussion, um, there was this, uh, a study issue was sponsored to take a look at the need and maybe where we could do some things. Uh, so the big part of tonight, uh, no decisions are going to be made. Really what we're doing is try to gather information. So we're really looking for input from the residents, input from the community for what they would like to see. Um, joining us tonight uh, is, is Mark Beginski and Pat Healy from Verde Design. Uh, they, they're the consulting firm that's gonna be working on this study. So they'll be doing the presentation and uh, collecting the bulk of the information. Um, but before I turn it over to Verde, I just wanna kinda in broad terms, talk about what we're trying to accomplish tonight. Uh, again, it's getting input from you on really three things. One is if we were going to build some cricket uh, batting cages in the city, youth cricket batting cages facilities, where should we put them? You know, what would make a difference for the residents? You know, maybe you'd like to see them in the north part of town, maybe at Ortega in the south, maybe Brawley. So we're looking to get some ideas on where suitable locations would be. Also, we're looking at the potential for shared use. You know, if we are going to build some batting cages, potentially could be there, they be used by cricket, but also maybe Little League, softball, and other user groups. So we're also interested in your opinion on that, you know, some feedback there. And lastly is how are we going to pay for this? So any ideas or thoughts that people have on potential funding sources, you know, we want to hear that information as well. Again, we're not here to make decisions tonight. We're really just to hear from you guys on, on, on you all and what, what you would like to see. Um, yes, and in, so to collect the information tonight, obviously we're in a virtual format. Um, on Zoom, if you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, there's a couple of ways you can provide us information. One would be at the bottom of your screen, there's a question and answer icon. You can click on that and, and provide your answer there. Uh, the nice thing about that is as we respond to that, the whole group will be able to see the answer at one time. Also, feel free to raise your hand and speak if you'd like to. You're more than welcome to do that. And then we'll also put up some other contact information like emails as another way to get us information. Maybe something pops into your mind after the meeting you wish you had said. So again, we intend this to be a two-way conversation, really to gather information uh, from the residents from what they want to see. Uh, uh, also joining us tonight is Ricky Lee. He's our, our admin staff technical whiz. So Ricky, did I miss anything or is there anything else we should mention before we turn it over to Verde? I think you're good. And uh, looking at the tenants, we now have 10. So oh, great. you're shaping great. up well. Okay. Well, I appreciate everybody uh, that, that can make it tonight. Uh, and, and with that said, uh, Pat and Mark, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, thank you, Jim. Thank you very much for having us tonight. And thank you everyone for joining. Uh, and it looks like we have some people who also attended our last meeting, which was on 
uh, last Tuesday at the 17th. So thanks for joining us again. And for those of you who, who weren't joining last week, welcome. Um, a lot of the presentation tonight will be recapping some of the stuff that I talked about last week, um, but we are still here to listen to your input, um, let your voice be heard, and don't forget to let us hear what you have to say, whether it be through question and answer, we're gonna have some open commentary toward the end, um, or just write something in the chat and I'll get into some more uh, details about ways that you can let your voice be heard on this topic moving forward. So with that, we'll go ahead and start uh, community meeting number two for Cricket Bad Engage study. Um, so just introductions, as, as Jim said, um, my name is Pat Healy from Verde Design. And the next slide, we are a landscape architecture, civil engineering and sports planning firm um, based in Santa Clara. And uh, next slide, I've got my principal with me here today, Mark McGinsky, landscape architect. Um, and myself, I'm also a landscape architect and project manager. Um, Verde Design does, a lot, does lots of sports projects within the Bay Area and north and south of uh, the Bay Area in California. Um, and we're here to kind of guide the city through the process, uh, the feasibility study, and I'm going to share with you kind of the steps in which we're taking to do that. So uh, next slide, please, Ricky. So the, the, the feasibility study, as Jim mentioned, is uh, kind of a linear process that the city is taking in response to some of the input that we've heard from the community. Um, it's kind of a linear process that's driven by our schedule, but you can see the community input is kind of a, a heavy portion of it. So uh, starting from, we are performing some site analysis in which we're visiting parks within the city of Sunnyvale. And we've determined some uh, ramifications for suitability of these parks to house batting cages, as I'll get into later. Um, identificating, or excuse me, identification of potential sites based on uh, available space, what the park has already, um, future uses, and supporting amenities. Um, we're also going to be looking at kind of a big picture batting cage design. So, what does it look like? How big is it? How tall is it? what kind of materials would make sense to place in there, um, and making sure that we're covering all the bases that we need for the purpose of, uh, of the user groups. Um, what's gonna come out of the process is we'll be um, bringing in input from our own data that we've collected from site analysis, as well as bringing in the input that you're giving us tonight and through other means of community input and kind of distilling it down into a report that we'll be sharing with the city um, that includes some of our identified prime locations for uh, batting cages, some of the, the design implications that will come out of the process, as well as identifying a budget and looking at options for funding of these items. So that's kind of the process. Um, next slide, please. Um, and as I mentioned, a major part of that is community input. So today we are asking for your input. I'm going to share a little bit about what steps we've taken already, um, but the, the major part of it is to get your input tonight and let your voice be heard, as I mentioned before. Um, the next slide. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, uh, we had a community outreach meeting last week on Tuesday, which we completed, and I think it went very well. We had about um, 35 attendees, excuse me, 24 people attending last week. I think tonight so far, what do we have? 15. So it's great that we're getting people that are interested in um, participating in this process. It's, it's great that you're coming out and sharing what you have uh, to, to offer us. Uh, so the, another way that we're asking for input is a community survey, and that is being um, set up live online. We'll have a link to it in the next page. And Ricky, maybe if you can uh, type that into the chat, that would be great so people can, can click on it. Um, as Jim mentioned, the Q&A section down at the bottom of the Zoom uh, window, you can 
type your questions in there at any time during this process and we'll, we'll see them. And then, you know, the sooner you ask a question, we'll have some time to kind of process it and we can respond to those once we get to the Q and A uh, section of the, the program tonight. Additionally, uh, Parks Department has offered a, an outreach through their email at parks at sunnydale.ca.gov. So you can go ahead and send them an email with any questions. Um, you know, maybe you're not a public speaker. If you would rather put your question in the form of an email, that's great. You can go ahead and do that at the email address there. Um, okay, next slide, Ricky. So a big portion of the input, as I mentioned, is the community survey. Here's the link here, which you can't quite click, click on, but um, if you look in the chat, you will see it there. Um, and the survey includes questions about kind of your use of the cricket facilities or your participation in cricket leagues, other sports leagues within the city, uh, what time you would be using those, kind of the age groups within your um, family that, that is looking for cricket facilities. We've got some questions about um, dimensions of the cricket cages in there. Um, there's a question about shared use in that survey. There's also a question about fund and funding sources in the survey. Um, one that I wanted to share with you is question one, which is which of the following city of Seattle parks um, have you visited to practice or play cricket? And here's some of the results. So we see a lot of people uh, utilizing Ortega Park. Uh, they've got a cricket pitch there, a big open field in between a couple of uh, baseball, softball field diamonds. Um, you can see there's a lot of activity at Fair Oaks Park, which is under construction right now and slated to have some cricket facilities included on those synthetic turf fields going in. Um, so we're seeing all this data come in so far. We've got about 160 participants, which is great, and 128 submitted responses. So it's great to see that people have taken um, this into account. And you know, if you copy that link and send it to your friends, they're welcome to participate. That's that's a great way to spread the word and get some info info for us. Um, next slide just reiterates kind of what we've had so far as far as responses. And this was as of yesterday, so we're still getting some trickling in today, which is great. Um, and that's gonna be open through September 10th. So please take your time and make sure to, to log in and provide us your information there. And at the end, the city's gonna spit out a report and we'll have all that data tabulated and really be helpful for us in uh, setting forth our recommendations uh, at the end of the process. Okay. All right, so next, just kind of getting back to the presentation outline, I'm gonna talk about the park assessment process that we're going through as consultants for the city. Um, if you click on the next slide, um, I mentioned before, some of the data that we're reviewing uh, includes visiting parks that are situated throughout the city of Sunnyvale. Um, there are apparently 772 acres of parks and open space within the city. And we are considering everything within the city for, um, for this purpose. So, you know, you can see throughout the city, there's, uh, there's a variety of parks kind of in the, in the north, the south, the center. Um, and we're trying to be cognizant of location within the city. We're also looking at available space, which is important. Some parks are little neighborhood parks that might not be able to even fit a cricket uh, batting cage. Some of them have plenty of room and it's just a matter of how it gets organized within what's out there. Um, we're also looking at um, amenities that are kind of required just to provide access, such as parking, um, restrooms for visitors. We're looking at lighting, depending on if people are planning to use these facilities into the evening hours. Um, and we're also looking at ancillary spaces, which includes, you know, adjacent playgrounds, adjacent picnic areas, so that a family can visit this park and be able to participate in multi, um, a multitude of activities at once. Okay, um, so I'm going to go into just an example of what we're looking at when we evaluate these parks, um, taking into account Fair Oaks Park as our first example. So if you can. Click on the next slide, please. So 
Fair Oaks Park is currently under construction, um, slated to be completed around uh, early 2022. And you can see on this page, we've got a site plan that's showing uh, a very large patch of synthetic turf. And outlined in the field space, there's going to be room for a youth and an adult cricket field. So we thought that that was a good factor in considering Fair Oaks Park as an opportunity for this kind of uh, batting, cage, uh, batting cage location. Uh, a couple other important things to note here, there's, there's two parking lots on the north and the south side of the park, which will provide access. We've got two restroom buildings, which are great. We've got kind of picnic areas interspersed, and this field will actually be lighted um, when it's constructed. So those are factors that we're looking at in making our decision, um, making our recommendations, I'm sorry. Um, and we've identified a location within this space um, for a potential shared use batting cage down in the, the checked box on the lower left corner there. Um, that was something we identified during the master plan process. And so it, it kind of makes sense to carry that through in this process, obviously. Um, the next slide shows kind of how we're taking some of those factors into account and putting it into a, a data format so that we can kind of tick all the boxes and be sure that we're uh, identifying the prime options for a batting cage location. So we've got available parking, we've got available, um, available space, there's already restrooms there. So these are important factors that we're looking at in, in making these determinations. Um, there's existing baseball facilities, or there will be existing baseball facilities in this location. You can see the diamonds on the corners of that, uh, that large synthetic turf area. So, you know, maybe in this location, an, an option for a shared use facility would make sense. You could have um, cricket batting practice. You could have baseball batting practice. Um, but for a game, there could be uh, cricketers, you know, practicing their bowling, practicing their catching. Um, before the, the game takes place, before the match takes place. So uh, this is a prime example of a good location for uh, selecting batting cages um, suitability. Okay. <clears throat> so as we, as we look at this big picture, uh, the next slide, we can, we're going to talk about getting into the nuts and bolts of what the batting cages might look like. Um, and part of our our task has been to come up with the batting cage design, um, ma mainly looking at kind of the big picture of it, you know, the height, the width, the length, what kind of materials it can be made out of, not getting into the specifics of, you know, what color it is or, um, you know, the, the door hinges, but just kind of at this level, we're, we're planning for what it might look like. Um, next slide, please. So, some of the main components that you'll see if you if you visited a batting cage before, um, you've got kind of a, a tunnel shape that forms the, the structure of the batting cage, and it's typically like a long narrow tunnel. What we've what we've heard from um, cricketers so far is you know about 16 feet wide, and we're soliciting more input on that at approximate length of 120 feet. And I'll get into kind of how we came up with some of those numbers uh, as we move forward here, but providing the option for both batting and bowling so that it can be uh, used by, for both, uh, for both types of activities. Uh, some of the materials that we're thinking of and taking into consideration, we want the pitch to be suitable so that the, the ball can bounce adequately. Um, when it's bowled, it's gonna bounce before it gets to the batter. So it's gotta have a little bit of the um, resiliency to it so that it doesn't just plop down on the ground and, and, and have like a dead ball reaction, but something that bounces up. Um, we want containment netting so that the balls, when they're deflected off the bat, um, are kind of softened before they get too far out. And then the structure of the fence will be, excuse me, the structure of the cages will be a chain link fence with an overhead system uh, of trusses that creates the support for, for the tunnels itself. Um, we've got a few diagrams on the next page that kind of show how we came up with some of these ideas. So some of the basic pitch dimensions from the standards that we've uh, sourced here, shown down below, 
Um, for adults, you know, the, the distance between the creases is, is 66 feet or 22 yards um, with the width of 10 feet. And then you need some adequate run up distance for the bowler so that they can pick up speed before they, they roll the ball. Um, we've also got uh, the pitch striping for youth, and this is indicated for U11 leagues, which is a little bit shorter. So we wanted to make sure everyone can have the opportunity with the regulation there. Uh, same width, and it is 21 yards, so three feet shorter. Uh, but you can see on the plan that we've got kind of a border around that pitch offset for the netting, and then a little bit more of a border offset for the fencing. And we'll show you a little bit more about that on the next slide. So starting from the top picture, this is a, a view of the batting cage, kind of a, a concept that we've come up with looking from the outside along the long side of it. So it's 120 feet long to provide room for the pitch itself, plus the run-up distance, an approximate height of 14 feet so that you have adequate overhead clearance, and then showing some of the, the netting that's hanging down from the top, uh, access gate to get in and out and keep it secure. And um, on the slide below, the image below is just a plan view. So looking from the top down, you can see the length of the pitch. Um, with the offset of the netting and the fencing, you get about a 20 foot long tunnel, excuse me, 20 foot wide tunnel. So if you stack two together, as shown in this example, you come up with a structure that's about 40 feet wide and 120 feet long. Um, now, if we look at that section cut that's labeled BB there, the next slide shows kind of a section view if you're standing inside the batting cage. So you get a feel for how it will be uh, when you're standing in there. Um, you can see the, the draping of the netting kind of on the, on the sides of the tunnel that allows for it to be loose. And that netting really helps deaden the balls from getting uh, from bouncing off of the external fencing, which is creating the structure for it. Um, so just some, some basic dimensions here. And again, we're, we're asking for input so that we can really um, pinpoint the optimal width and height for some of these, uh, for these tunnels. You know, we may be able to fit more within a, a footprint of say uh, 40 feet width, uh, but we're really looking for your input for that. And just another note, this is an example of a, um, a two tunnel cage. And another question on our survey is asking how many you would like to see kind of in one setting. So if there's a lot of people getting ready to play a game that need to, need to practice, maybe you need three tunnels, maybe you need four tunnels. We haven't really come up with the conclusion on that yet, but this is just an example of how they can stack side by side and maximize the use of the space there. Um, so those are some of our more technical drawings, but on the next slide, you get to see more of a three-dimensional view of it. Um, so you can see some of the components I mentioned on the outside, the steel frame with the chain link on the outside, and that creates kind of the bones of it. Um, Offset from that is an interior nylon netting that deadens the ball and provides a little bit of a safety from the, from the ball for, um, for the players inside. And then the surfacing, you can see we've incorporated both uh, markings for the youth and adult uh, regulation pitch length. So there's a lot, of, a lot of opportunity to use that surface to provide markings for whatever the user groups are identified as. Um, we're focusing on youth in this study, but we want to be as um, thoughtful as we can for shared use of ages and shared uses of um, other components, which I'm going to get into on the next slide. So this kind of just goes back to what we had before on the plan view. Um, we've got youth and adult cricket pitch striping. And if you fit, if you Think about it, um, we, we had talked about the shared use idea. Um, the next slide shows how, if you take some of the dimensions for baseball and softball, how those kind of fit neatly within that footprint um, of the cricket pitch and really provides an opportunity for us to explore what 
what we could do um, with this joint use idea, which is something that the, the study wanted us to look at. Um, so for a range of age groups going all the way from T-ball, which is 42 feet up to um, you know, regulation 60 feet, six inches for, for baseball, you can really nest uh, multiple uses in there. And the next slide shows how that might fit side by side with um, a joint use batting cage design. So you've got opportunity for a cricket um, bowling and batting tunnel on one side, and pitching and batting for baseball, softball, uh, just next door to it, and kind of get that interchangeable use. Um, you know, considerations did come up for, you know, baseball might want a mound. Uh, we've got options for portable mounds. That's something that we see all the time. Um, there's a way to work out the design so that we can really optimize the design so that both sports um, have the same opportunity for usage. So, and that's what we're trying to do in the study. So we haven't determined that this is going to be a shared use facility, but this is just one way that it might work. Um, so we talked about batting cage design. We got into some of the, <clears throat> the shared use options that we're thinking about there. Um, I see a couple of questions have rolled in and um, that concludes kind of my, my portion of the feasibility study uh, and the community outreach portion. So now we're really looking for those, uh, those the questions. We've got a few that come in, came in and maybe we can have uh, Ricky kind of delegate some of the questions and we can get those answered for you. Sounds good. So let me set up the clock first and then we will allow uh, patrons to speak. Thank you. Ganesh, uh, you are allowed to speak. You have three minutes. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ricky. Appreciate uh, letting me speak. Uh, thank you, Pat, and thank you, uh, Mark, for as well as Jim, uh, for this continuous study that we've been uh, attending the meeting. So a couple of things I again want to reiterate is the, the, the width uh, is definitely uh, could be reduced and, and, and more lane could be accommodated. 16 feet is too wide for a, for a batting net, to be honest. So that's, that's the first point I want to make. Uh, again, my, I want to reiterate that, you know, shared use is, 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 is you're actually creating a, uh, uh, you know, as much as you would want to coexist, you know, the amount of demand for cricket is so high that, uh, you know, I don't know how shared use could actually, you know, work. So that's something that I would, you know, want to bring it up just the way I brought it last time. Uh, one more point is, as we discussed in the past, uh, in the last meeting is like, in Northern California Cricket Association, by the way, I'm the president of NCCA, and we would be interested to, you know, contribute to the, to the, to the, to the cost of this uh, belt. Provided we get, uh, you know, uh, as Jim mentioned in the past, that we get priority usage because the, the demand for cricket uh, practice. Uh, by the way, I did go to uh, Fair Oaks Park the other day and actually did uh, stop by the saw the construction in progress there. So uh, great progress there. But yeah, uh, NCC would be definitely interested in provided we, you know, get priority usage. And uh, once again, thank you very much for this opportunity. Yeah, one more thing I want to mention is the the size of the batting nets. They don't need to be, you know, for youth smaller and adults bigger. It has to be the same. And then the youth is just portable stumps that can be put in for the for the youth. So I, I saw Mark already responded to the question or, or comment that I had. So. These are the things I want to point out. We have a few more uh, folks from NCCA uh, who would want to chime in because the demand of, for the nets is so high that uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really, you know, looking forward to when the nets are, are going to be, you know, inaugurated. Even though it's 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 a study and it's it's a work in progress, work in process over over the next few months or. Um, 
how long it takes. But yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity. This time I'm making sure I get to use the three minutes. Last time I just out in a minute and a half. So thank you very much uh, again, Ricky, uh, Pat, uh, Jim, and Mark uh, for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like I may have uh, toggled one of the participants' hands down. Uh, I believe Ganesh already spoke. Um, if I put your hand down, please raise your hand again. Um, for Chandra, you are now allowed to speak. Yeah, are you able to hear me? This is um, Chandra. Hey, uh, thanks for information. I think this is my second call attending. A uh, lot of information you guys are giving and a lot of other folks also there well known how the cricket pitches and all, but I will go to the different route. One is that, do you have a plan, so vision plan? How many we are going to build it? If, you see, if I see this one, I've been here for 21 years in the sun, Sunnyvale area. I see zero practice grounds for cricket. Do you have any plans? How many you are planning for the over the period of time? Is it, and another question I have is, or do you have any plans for the short term, like a, uh, like a temporary mat or artificial mat, you can build it up? And uh, I see some of the grounds, uh, I have bad experiences here is that uh, I took my son to the ground. We don't have facility to play sometime, even practice also. We had to go out from the ground because they are occupied with somebody. Do you have anything ground that okay? This ground can be used for a cricket, and some like a Premont, right? And uh, we can put the artificial mat, and the kids can start working on. So uh, that's what my all my questions. And uh, yeah, uh, sorry, that's it. No more questions after this. Thank you. Jim, I think that uh, might be. Yeah. So the question was, do we, you know, what, I, as far as I understood, the kind of facilities in the in the city, and can you put down a temporary mat? Um, yes. Well, we do have the, you know, the one pitch at Ortega, obviously, that is a, you know, as close to a proper pitch as we have in the city. You know, when you start talking about using temporary structures, um, you know, I, I what I would suggest is contact the parks office, give me a call, and let me know what you're thinking about doing. Some things I think we can allow, some things might, might be a little more difficult based on the municipal code, um, because we do have municipal codes that do speak to uh, temporary structures in parks. So, you know, in general rules, if you're putting down a, a temporary pitch that's not gonna damage the turf, you don't have to worry about injuring people near around you, I think it's, it's just fine. Um, but if you're starting to do something more substantial or you're starting to use a larger part of the field, then that gets into, you know, temporary structure discussions and also, you know, uh, permitting issues about other people using the same field as well. So hopefully that answers your question. If not, you know, let me know. Um, and you can always call me directly at the parks office so we can have a conversation about it. We have another speaker, Ganesh, you are free to speak. Hi everyone, uh, this is Ganesh Prasad. I have two kids, uh, my daughter 15 years Chetna and uh, 13 years Sabrish. This is very exciting and like, you know, dream come true. In the past couple of meetings, we have come and spoken and it's fantastic to see the plan is shaping up. Uh, just to uh, capture quickly, my daughter recently represented the Western Conference, went the national level tournament, and really looking forward to playing at the national level, representing United States. Same way, I think many of the youth and their parents uh, joining me today, they all have a great dream of representing this country. And uh, there is a talk uh, in Olympics, uh, cricket may be introduced soon. I think we are mobilizing as a community at the right time and the cages, the dimension and the shape it is taking. Uh, we cannot support better than this, the youth that is coming along. And uh, we are very excited about that as Ganesh Sanap in the first one and the other parents who talk. Uh, is there any way as a community we can join you and uh, support? Uh, please let us know. We'll be very happy to do that because we need more cages, especially with the closed one for the safety of the surrounding people and also 
um, practicing more helps them prepare for the international levels. We are talking some uh, good level of cricket coming along in this community and these kind of cages and also uh, the grounds we are talking about in the future. And uh, I think uh, kudos to all of you and uh, truly appreciate all the help you guys are giving to the next generation. Like we have another speaker, Yasharan. Uh, sorry if I uh, butchered your name, uh, but you are good to speak. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Thanks for giving the opportunity. I'm a Sunnyvale resident for almost 20, 20 plus years now, and this is really an exciting time. My son also plays cricket. Uh, he also represented uh, uh, our zone and uh, was part of the Probables for under 19. So uh, all this uh, really excites me. Um, yeah. My son couldn't have these facilities when needed, but hopefully upcoming generation gets that. But uh, I would like to uh, stress that it's it's really important to have this uh, practicing nets uh, and especially during winter time. So having lighting is also quite important because winter uh, people like kids really don't get any time by the time they come out of school, it's dark and uh, they absolutely don't get a chance to practice. So uh, from my perspective, having those uh, lighting fixtures is really important. And other thing maybe not exactly related to the nets is, but related to the outfield. I, I don't know what exactly the rules are, but something like Ortega Park, the grass is so high that it, it just doesn't help the game of cricket. So. Uh, I don't know, even if like reducing the height of the grass by half an inch or so will, will really help. And uh, even if something can be controlled in terms of uh, watering, right? The fields are wet in the morning. So something on that front would help. And then in coming back to the sharing the facilities, I, I agree with uh, what Ganesh was speaking. Um, with the amount of demand, it, it would get difficult uh, unless we have something really... Uh, good for booking uh, structure out there, online booking structure where there is certain sort of fairness or um, uh, priority kind of a thing. So th those were uh, main suggestions. I had asked a couple of questions regarding the length. Uh, can we have some length behind the wicket so that wicket keeping can be done? Uh, and uh, we can provide more details in terms of uh, how much length would be needed. But that was another uh, question that I had. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it from my side. Thanks, thanks for the time. Thank you. That concludes all of our raised hands for the moment. Oh, and then we do have one more right now. Uh, David Casting, you are free to speak. Hey, how are you doing, Ricky? Good, very well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Mark from Verde. I really appreciate you guys coming out and doing this uh, this uh, uh, presentation. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Jim Stark from the city. I really do appreciate you guys coming out here and uh, being part of this presentation. Uh, I also want to say that I concur with Ganesh and Yoshander uh, about the excitement of, uh, of this uh, particular project. Uh, I'm always enthusiastic about uh, anyone who's playing a, uh, a game uh, outdoors, we're playing sports outdoors, especially sports that are being played where you are on the offense and you do not have the ball. Uh, in that sense, I'd also like to talk about another game or two other games that also play this, uh, in this in this particular way. And that would be the great sport of baseball and the great sport of softball. I represent uh, the board of directors from Sunnyville National Little League, and I also assist with the uh, president's meeting at the local Little League. And I would like to tell you that currently we have about 50 kids signed up for fall ball in Sunnyvale Little League for the fall. We approximately have 200 kids signed up in the spring. And across Little League in Sunnyvale, we have about 1,000 kids who sign up annually. We're currently experiencing a lot of growth in Little League. I'm happy to see that we're back out and playing again after having the uh, shutdown COVID season. Uh, I'm glad to see that we're seeing an expansion of, uh, of play uh, for the fall season here in Sunnyvale National which is the league uh, that coincides at Fair Oaks Park. Uh, I have a couple of questions about uh, the particular use of this uh, field and the particular use of, uh, and the particular uh, cricket uh, specifics that are happening in Sunnyvale. 
can you please extrapolate on the youth cricket league of Sunnyvale? Exactly how many kids are playing uh, in this particular league? How many families are in this league? And what are the dates of the season that, that, that take place? Also, can you explain who else would be using these batting cages? Are uh, there any women who are playing in these batting cages, uh, these proposed batting cages? Uh, I know that uh, it's possible for the women's softball leagues that would be playing there, and I think that'd be a worthwhile thing to have happen. How many batting cages are currently in Sunnyvale? I am currently only know about the one in Sarah Park, so I'm wondering uh, if there are any ones that we could talk about. What was, uh, how many requests for batting cages have been made for uh, Sunnyvale in the, for, for the Little League in the last few years? I've asked the local Little League and they have not been able to tell me about this. Apparently the last one built that they know of was 20 years ago in Sarah Park. What was the cost of that? Is it possible that, um, uh, how, how much money would, needed, would be needed in order to produce a, a, a field like this? I think that the comments about the league, about the cages being too wide is consistent. I think getting something about 10 feet to 12 feet wide would be more than enough. And I would like to uh, ask a question of, if this is only for cricket players, how exactly do you see that strict adherence being regulated? And what effect do you think that might have on the local community? Thank you very much for your time today. I look forward to hearing your responses. I tell you what, I'll jump in on that one. Uh, David, thanks for joining us and I appreciate the commentary. I think I lost track on question about, about question number nine there. Um, so I'll make a couple of comments and, and your questions were quite good and I appreciate them. Um, to, to answer your questions, the best way for us to get you that information, because it, it's a lot and I want to make sure we're accurate, is, is just send me an email. We'll have an email just at the end. Um, you can send it to me and you know we'll get what information we can for you. I don't believe we have formal cricket. You know, the city does not facilitate formal cricket in this, like we do Little League. So we may not have the numbers you're looking for. We'll cobble what we can. But again, the purpose of this meeting was to get input on, you know, what you wanted to see and get ideas. So we can certainly get you information on, you know, like, like you know, we have the two, big, the two batting cages, one at Sarah, one at De Anza. As far as I know, they were all built and paid for by uh, Little League. Um, and that goes back decades. So we can certainly get you these answers, uh, but I think in the essence of time and accuracy, if you would email them to me and then we'll get it together and we'll get the answers to you. How does that sound? I hope it sounds okay because I'm not sure if we can have a back and forth here, but please do that. Go ahead and email me the questions. We'll get it, we'll get it answered back to you in a week or two. Um, and then otherwise we've recorded this so we've got all your commentary as well for the information we need. Ganesh, uh, you are free to speak. Uh, so, you know, I, I heard uh, David ask these questions as to how many number of kids uh, are playing cricket. It's just we don't have any facility to play cricket for the kids. I mean, build one and I'll tell you, I'll show you a thousand kids show up every week. That's the way I'm looking at it. We just don't have any facility for the kids in the city of Sunnyvale. Just the numbers that he gave for for baseball and and, and softball, right? So, so I've been I've been part of uh, I've lived in Sunnyvale. Now I live in actually Santa Clara. But since in you know, leading a cricket association, I felt it's important for me to you know chime in here. Is is until unless he build, they won't come. I mean, you know that's that's how it is. I don't think we are here to you know uh, compete with baseball or you know steal facilities from baseball. This constant back and forth that I've seen over the past two, three meetings that I've attended, I think there's, uh, you know, there's so much room that we can all coexist, especially the sport. It is for our kids, all our kids. It's not for, you know, one community over other community over other community, whether it's soccer, baseball, cricket. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say is this is they're building it for our kids, for our future generations, for our future mayors for our future council folks, for our future tech leaders. We are talking about everybody uh, who, who, who want to play, who want to you know, stay healthy. So th that's what I want to answer to David. Uh, uh, additional numbers and everything, we can definitely work on it. But as I said, you know, if there are no nets in the city of Sunnyvale, how do you expect to, you know, anybody to demonstrate the numbers that are, that are part of the uh, you know, uh, cricket uh, competition. So thank you very much, Ricky, for letting me uh, uh, answer, uh, chime in. And uh, and then again, I don't mean to offend uh, David by any way, 
uh, I'm promoting sport, you're promoting sport. So we should be sitting together and having a good conversation. Then this, uh, this uh, question. Thank you, Ricky. Appreciate it. Right, lots of good questions, good input. Um, appreciate all the, the questions and discussion so far. Um, Mark's been answering a lot of the written questions. Um, so if you have any more, you can type those in and we will make sure to keep track of those. Um, if there are, I see any other topics to discuss or questions that you want to bring up? Um, so we're going to let, uh, well, Pat, did you raise your hand? Yeah, <laughs> that was a test. I raised my hand just to do uh... Well, no worries. Uh, so we do have David uh, asking to speak again. Um, David, you are up. Yes, hi, thank you once again. Uh, I just wanted to, to respond to Mr. Ganesha and also to say out loud, I, I heard the, about the one gentleman named Ganesh whose daughter was uh, playing at a very high level uh, in cricket here in Sunnyvale. And then another man, uh, Yashan, Yashanda, whose son was playing at a very high level of cricket in, uh, in Sunnyvale. And you know, good for them. I'm very proud of that accomplishment, and I I am very proud uh, of seeing cricket players out here in Sunnyvale too, right? I uh, I am not of the opinion that we can only have one uh, sport uh, that's being played without uh, we are on offense without a ball, right? In the in the city of Sunnyvale, I regularly field uh, uh, I regularly maintain the field at Washington Park, and I regularly see uh, cricket players out on Washington Field uh, almost every morning, Saturday mornings and on Sunday mornings. I always do my best. To engage those individuals and try to speak with them and try to expand my knowledge of the sport as well. Uh, but I have to respond uh, to Mr. Ganesh, uh, who says that you're trying to build this for the kids uh, and say that this is not a competition, uh, but, uh, but that it is uh, something that's being done together. Uh, in the spirit of having something that's being built for the kids and in the spirit of something that's going to be uh, not a competitive, uh, a competi a co competitive uh, use of uh, park space, uh, then I, I, I have to question the motive of building a uh, specific uh, batting cage, a specific facility for only one sport when it could easily be shared amongst many, especially uh, when it could be easily, the cost of these items can easily be covered by, non by local nonprofit leagues that are already established in the city. Uh, so that's my major comment. Um, thank you so much again, and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the, uh, the time. All right. Thank you, David. And Pat and Mark, have we answered all of the questions via Q&A? Looks as though we have. Yes. Okay. okay. So we do have one more speaker. Saniri, you are allowed to speak. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm Srini Salver. So I am one of the directors on uh, USA Cricket Board and also been a resident uh, in Sunnyvale, for Sunnyvale for like almost 15 years, uh, moved, just moved out. Uh, but uh, just want to bring up a point, um, you know, uh, I, I'm a coach as well. So I've been coaching a lot of kids uh, from Sunnyvale, Cupertino area for last uh, 15 years. And I have seen a lot of kids uh, drop out because uh, they did not have a facility to go and train uh, to the point um, Ganesh made uh, where his uh, daughter is playing and uh, another speaker said his son has been playing for uh, the zone. You know, um, I just wanted to, you know, uh, compliment that part saying, you know, it is hard for players to uh, take up the sport or, you know, continue the sport after they have uh, uh, showed some interest to uh, pick up the sport and uh, play it, you know, and uh, we have so many players, just not the ones mentioned on the call earlier that, you know, have represented um, USA under 19 and uh, been residents of Sunnyvale. Uh, and also to uh, David's question about, you know, um, the facility being uh, used for multi-purpose uh, or, you know, multiple sports. I think it's, it, it has to do something with the way the, the nets are set up. Um, and that, that is the reason, you know, it cannot be or might not be useful for uh, other sports, but uh, there's nothing like, you know, we want to like restrict it only to cricket, I know. And yeah, again, uh, thanks for the opportunity. And, um, you know, I really appreciate what you guys are uh, doing for uh, the youth sports. Thank you.
All right, great. Thank you for that. So a lot of good questions there. And, you know, we're still open to field your questions via email um, and get your input via the survey. Um, that can help provide some of that data. There's room to write in questions or comments in the survey as well if you have additional thoughts. So don't forget to, to do that and share your share with your friends who maybe aren't in attendance, share with your kids, your cousin, your neighbor, um, spread the word. Ricky, maybe you can put the, the presentation back up, move to that next slide where it has the contact info. Right, so thanks, Mark. Um, just getting back, we've got a couple concluding uh, slides here. So next steps, as I mentioned, we're, we're kind of running through the process. Um, community input is still obviously valid and we're absorbing all this data and taking notes. We've captured all the, the questions that have been asked today. We've got uh, surveys coming in. And so we're kind of moving forward toward making our recommendations and that'll be coming in the next, in the next weeks and months, um, weeks after the, the closure of the community input process. Um, so keep on top of that. And um, next slide, we're just reinforcing some other ways you can, you can stay involved. Um, we'll be taking community notes, taking notes on the meeting and uh, recording them for our data purposes. We'll be continuing to re review and um, get that input from the surveys and other sources. Um, we're also looking at funding strategies, input from the community on ways that that funding will be sourced. Um, and as I said, the survey is active online right now, uh, going on through September 10th. So you still got a couple of weeks to, to log in and uh, plug in your information if you haven't already. Thank you to those of you who have. It's been great to get input. We've got a lot of good survey data so far, but the more we get, the better, just so that we can really have as much data to uh, provide our, our best recommendations for the study. Um, and with that, did we have anything else? I think. Yeah, I, I think that's it, Pat. Hey, uh, great job with the presentation. I appreciate it. Uh, and again, thanks for everyone who came tonight. Uh, I think it was a healthy discussion, you know, between these two meetings that we had, and they both were identical, just as a reminder, no really new information. Um, we got a lot of survey response. We had robust conversation around, around ideas. Um, and I think we have the information we need to move forward. I saw one of the last questions that came in was, when will the, when will the nets be built? Um, again, we're not building anything at this point, right? No decision has been made to build any batting cages or any facilities. What we're, what we're doing is we realize there's a need for cricket in the city. Uh, city council heard that loud and clear. So what Verde is doing is give us ideas on where we should put them, you know, how many we should have, how many tunnels, how they should be constructed, should they be lit or not, um, all the things we talked about tonight. So we'll probably have this study uh, go into council sometime, you know, this winter, hard to say, but probably sometime this winter, this council will be presented, or the study will be presented to council. And at that point, council will have some decisions to make as far as what they'd like to do moving forward. Um, so that's kind of how that is. But with that said, we'll go ahead and go ahead and wrap things up um, on the screen. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Ricky. Hey, Jim. Uh, so it looks like I'm currently unable to uh, provide the survey via the chat. Um, so I'm gonna leave this uh, slide up for the next five minutes. If you guys would like to take the survey, please copy down uh, the, like the link. Um, and we do have one more question. Oh, okay. It looks like the hand got taken down, so that's okay. Um, everyone, uh, looks like we are done with this meeting. Um, however, I will be here for the next five minutes. Uh, please click the link for the survey. Yeah, and I'll just throw that as well. You can always contact the city parks department um, if you have questions or you want to provide more information, anything like that, feel free to reach out to parks. With that said, uh, Ricky, thanks so much for your help tonight. Again, we appreciate everyone's participation. Uh, obviously, we can't, we can't do it without you. And we certainly, uh, the intent of city council is to give the residents, you know, as best they can, the facilities that they want to see built. So everyone have a great evening. Um, and we look forward to bringing this report out sometime in the wintertime. All right. Good night. Thanks, everybody.
For everyone is still in attendance. Uh, this slide will be up until 7 p.m. Um, again, apologies that I'm unable to send the link. Um, however, uh, you should be able to copy it um, over the next five minutes. It also looks like if you look, if you can open the Q&A, does it, mm -hmm. can the public have access to that, Ricky? I believe that the Q&A, uh, they only see what they send and what we respond to that particular person um, as opposed to okay. all around. But let me see if I can try to share this with everyone. Because it looks like Prakash cut and pasted it in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like I can click it and get to the... Uh, I know that you see it, but I don't think that the other participants see it. Okay, okay. So I just clicked the toggle said all questions should be able to view for attendees. Uh, so hopefully uh, they'll be able to see um, our link now.
Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Uh, we greatly appreciate your feedback. Um, everyone have a nice day and good night. Thanks, Ricky. Thank